aerial, handheld antenna. And couples this in with the headphones. And uh, locates this way. The other system that we use on the helicopter is the electrics system. And uh, it is a, an, an electric uh, immobiliser, the same current that is used to move the animal's mus muscles, the same current uh, is manufactured in the helicopter and uh, the, the muscles of the deer uh, or animal are overridden by uh, this device. It's, it's a modified um, Smith & Weston firing blanks again through a chamber and out the double barrels and two darts come out coupled to a twin flex wire. And uh, when this uh, hits the animal, the uh, barbs locate just under the skin and the animal uh, becomes immobilized. And the uh, pilot operates that and as soon as he is hobbled, it's switched off. The electric current freezes the deer immediately. It's helpless, entirely controlled by the cable which links it to the helicopter. Only when it's been bound will the pilot turn the current off and give the deer back its ability to move. The system also spares the deer the long terror of the chase. At times, a well-equipped helicopter can combine a number of devices to get the best results. Pursuing a pair of deer, this crew uses the drug and transmitter darts on one. Then knowing that the deer will quickly and easily be traced when the tranquilizer has taken effect, they're free to capture the second with the electric immobilizer. Most of the new catching methods have been costly in time and money. Only an operation the size of Tim Wallace's could have developed them. But smaller operators too have applied their ingenuity. Say is uh, just unwrap it, that's all. 
My motto is everything's is the three S's, yes, safe, simple and sure. <laughs> Three he's got three one dead one, so anyway. Did he? Six live is with it. It's funny. Yeah. And one dead one. Oh, there it is. Very good. Just a little simple uh, modification of the old smelling. <laughs> three oh three. <laughs> uh, we we developed this really uh, from necessity, practically. We never had much uh, luck with drugs, and uh, we have been <laughs> unable to get uh, other sophisticated gear. So we thought, well, here we go. We'll go and develop something that's uh, quite simple and safe, and uh, pretty sure fire. And this is what we come up with after a bit of oh, about nine, twelve months of uh, developing and uh, throwing away and what have you. Uh, Quite a simple thing, this is uh, to all intents and purposes a 10 litre darn petrol tin. Here's, here's your 303 and a couple of barrels which carry projectiles which spread your net. Your rifle's fired with a 303 blank uh, into a common chamber. Projectiles take your net out, break your rubber bands and cast it over the deer. Got a range of about uh, 30, 40 feet or so and that's all we need on the helicopter. It's testimony this morning. Six live units. Just to show the boys there, that actually how it does go the first time we, we put the tin out there, we'll deep. give you a standing shot. <laughs> Feet, 30 feet on, on a reasonably still day, and you're firing at 30 feet, you give it a wee bit, just a wee bit of lift. The barrels, you'll notice, have got a, quite a cast upwards, and uh, that allows for you uh, pr practically on sight like a shotgun. You don't you don't need sights. Just you, while you're looking down the, down the fork, so you can't miss. Did you aim high then? I aimed about... Uh, about a foot. But, uh, that, that'll get a perfect pattern on it because this wind wasn't blown. Out of the chopper seems to have an even better pattern. The, the cushion of air from the chopper puts it straight on the ground and flat. The deer catching methods developed in New Zealand have led to a multi million dollar investment in the new industry but deer farming has yet to prove itself. Cultivated venison may not attract the European diner as much as the animal which was shot in the Alps and rushed 10,000 miles to his table. Farmers have accused the red deer of destroying the land. Politicians have legislated for their extermination. Deer stalkers have shot them for pleasure and others for profit. The reactions to them are still strong and the deer catcher's quest for the perfect catching device is never ending. I'm looking now at the one dart system and what we're going to do is we're going the next size up in dart which is a 745. It's yeah. going fatter yeah. but it means that the barbs can be a bit further apart because your needle's got to pass through that yeah. and then uh, your transmitter slug can be sure. narrower, all the components can be uh, yeah, pushed in so and your drugs less so you'll still have that same shape whereas short. it'll be short. It'll be this in a single barrel. Is it and, be... and, 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 and that's the same gauge as that, so it just fits straight on. So you can you just poke it in the back. Yeah. You don't have to so, poke it down oh, the front. Yeah. So, you, so your big, your big data will be about that fat. It's, it's that fat, you see, and it just fits straight in there.
In the high valleys of the Southern Alps, above the snow line, the spring flowers are returning. There are plants blooming here that have not been seen in living memory. The success of deer control has been virtually complete, yet the situation is slightly ironical. Since breeding stock will soon be available from the farms, the economics of capture may force the helicopters to withdraw from the mountains. Those few deer remaining will then face an abundance of feed not seen since their ancestors first began to invade the forests. Who will stop them this time? Thank you. 